Hello, and welcome to Console Info. These are some shows that I'm gonna be making that go a little bit more in depth on how to improve your JavaScript skills. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about how to add ESLint to your JavaScript project. ESLint is a great tool for making sure that your JavaScript code is healthy and free of any errors that a machine could otherwise catch for you. The analogy that I like to make is that ESLint provides nice guardrails while you walk along the tightrope that is JavaScript. So to start things off, I'm going to make a new project that we'll code together with. So we're going to do make dir uh, uh, ESLint demo, cd ESLint demo, and let's go into our code editor for that. You're welcome to code along with me if you want, or just let me do all the work. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is initialize a new node project with npm init. It's going to ask me some questions. I'm going to say yes, yes, good, great, perfect, love it, yes, sweet. So the first thing that I'm going to do, what we have in here, uh, let's just init our repo. I always like to do this just so I can keep track of the progress that I've made in a, pro in a project. So uh, git add dot, git status, git commit, we'll do init commit. Cool, so let's uh, make a uh, file that we're gonna actually code in. We have this index.js file. And what should we have it do? I'm just gonna have it say, I like logs five times, how about that? So we're gonna say const uh, message equals I like logs. And we are going to then, what should we have it do? How do we do this? Um, uh, uh, just make a for loop, I guess. So for index, let's do i uh, is less than five. And we're just going to say uh, console log message. Cool. So if you run this node index, great, because I didn't save it. <laughs> Cool, I like logs. Let's actually make this uh, show message. We'll do this here. Sweet, so cool. So we have a simple project that we can use and everything looks fine, but let's actually add some things a little bit weird. So let's just make like, you know, did show message and we're gonna say equals uh, false, okay? And everything looks fine, but you'll see why I'm gonna add this in a second. So this is cool, let's commit this. So, you know, initial work, initial work. That's a hard word to spell. Uh, gotta add it, cool. Uh, so the first thing you can do when you're adding ESLint, this is the uh, fun part of the demonstration, is npm install save dev ESLint. And you're going to save ESLint as a dev dependency because Dev dependencies are things that are in your project that aren't required for production usages. Linting is an example of that where you can lint something but doesn't really need to be passing lint to actually work in production. So for that case, we're going to install ESLint. And there's the Jeopardy theme song playing somewhere. Cool, done. And there's a little known fact that ESLint actually comes with a built-in way of initializing itself. So what we can actually do is go in and do init. And here we're presented with some questions. Uh, how would you like to configure ESLint? Answer questions about your style, use a popular style guide, inspect your JavaScript files. Uh, I'm gonna actually just have it ask me some questions. So am I using ECMAScript 6 features? Yeah, sure. Are you using modules? No, because this is a common JS project with Node. Uh, my code will only be ran in, the, in Node, not the browser, so I can do that. Uh, I do not use JSX. Uh, I use spaces, I use single, uh, Unix, yes. What format do you want your config file to be in? Uh, let's just do JSON. Sweet. So now if you check here, uh, let's do git status, you can see that my package JSON file has been modified, as well as my ESLintRC file has been created. If you hop in here, you can see some basic things already in here. This is really cool. And this is, this is the part that I find most beneficial is that by default, ESLint has built-in recommendation, built-in recommended rules. And here you can actually see them being extended so that you get all of those base rules for free. And then here you have places that are being overwritten. And this, to begin a project, is 
more than fine. This is a great beginning to make sure that you have started linting your code, that there's no erroneous errors that might be in there that are a little bit harder to catch. So if you actually back into index, we actually see that we have some things that are being yelled at. So what is this? Expected indentation of four spaces. So this is a place where I'm like, no, yes, lint, I actually want two spaces. So if we go here, indent, we'll actually change this to two. Save it. And there we go. That error went away. And this is where I think the real power of ESLint comes in because this is a pretty you know, contrived example, but what you see here is that uh, did show message is assigned a value but never used. And I've seen this a lot in my code and other people code where you are working on some software and you make some variables and you keep working on it and you forget that you made those variables and they just kind of stick around there and they're not needed in any way. And ESLint is because it can statically analyze your code, tell you about these things. And this is the example of that happening. So let me actually delete that. So that's no longer there. And here's another one. Unexpected console statement. And that's usually good. Usually you don't want to actually have console log statements in your code. It's usually a sign that you're debugging. You don't really want that. But for our use cases, I actually want to keep that. So here's another little thing that you can do with ESLint. You actually just say, as a comment, to disable ESLint for a rule. ESLint disable next line disabled and I don't have to worry about it anymore. However, I'm not a big fan of these blanket disabling statements. So what you should actually do, my trick is like undo it. And I see that the rule here is no console. That is the ESLint rule. And that is the only rule that I want to disable for the next line. So if I do uh, no console, that goes away. Because if I had just, so now if I delete the semicolon, you can see that the error comes back because this is now a different rule that it's complaining about, semi. If I had just done ESLint to the next line like that, that wouldn't have been caught, which is why you want to actually explicitly call out the rules that you're disabling when you're doing these features. Let's go back, do that, save it, cool. And now let's add some command line usages for this as well so that you don't have to rely on just your editor for ESLinting. So we'll go to package.json. We're going to say lint, and we're going to say eslint, where you can reference the node module from here directly. We don't have to go into node modules for that. And then uh, I forget the signature for this. Let's do npm run lint. And I want it to be a file. So if I just do uh, that, does that work? Let's go back and actually get this erroring out to make sure. Oh, this is, ah, cool. So now if I do npm run lint, and there we go, we have our error successfully being ran. So if I add back that disable line, save it, then run this again, I am lint free. So that was a quick introduction to how to add ESLint into your project. This is probably the dead simple way to get started. There are many more richer default ESLint configuration files that you can use on the internet. The big one is Airbnb, which you've probably heard of before. They have a huge guide and styles that they try to follow, but I think that might be a little bit too heavy handed to get started. Having just the basic ESLint recommended files and then going on to the website for ESLint to see things you want to change up will get you at least on a good solid foundation. So uh, that is ESLint. Hopefully you've learned something new. It's very easy to get up and started with ESLint and look forward to the next episode where I teach you something else that's new. See you then.